1.2 million children are trafficked for sex each year. Now, this is a horrifying statistic. And a small school in Vietnam is working to keep even one more child from becoming a victim. The Catalyst Foundation says hundreds of families live in a garbage dump and their children can become easy prey for traffickers. Now, the trash heap has been their home for generations ever since they fled the Khmer Rouge in Cambodia. Now, it sits in southern Vietnam, very close to the border. The nearest town is called Rakhia. Head 25 kilometers to the northwest, and you'll find Kien Giang. It's a, the garbage dump there. You can just look at how big it is. And Natalie Allen, she went there on a humanitarian trip, and what she found there was heartbreaking. But the story is not without hope. From the beauty of Halong Bay in the north, to the lush countryside in the central highlands, Vietnam is a country of contrast. A picture of rural life seemingly untouched by time, where generations of families toil in the rice fields. Vietnam also has one of the world's fastest growing economies and a skyline to match. But in this country of 90 million, this is progress most here will never see. It was early morning when I touched down deep in the Mekong Delta on the southwest tip of Vietnam. I came here on a humanitarian trip. All of us volunteers from several different countries. All I knew was we were going to build a playground for poor children but I wasn't prepared for how poor. They live on a garbage dump. Hundreds of Khmer's, Cambodian refugees who spend their days picking through trash for food and for pennies. It's afternoon here and that means the real work is about to begin. There's a four o'clock truck that comes in. They'll work that for about two hours sorting through. And then at 11 o'clock, apparently the best truck comes in with the most trash that they could recycle. And many of these families, the children as well, will work through the night. I watched as this young mother sorted, pressed, stomped, and carried away an afternoon's haul. Her load will bring her family less than 35 cents. These people are so desperate, I'm still haunted by what happened just minutes after we arrived. A father offered to sell us his baby, this little boy. There's no shortage of traffickers looking to seize on that desperation. Every day, these children are at risk of being taken away, bought, and sold. When we started, we knew of a house that was at the entrance of the dump. And we knew that girls were being taken in there by traffickers and raped. If they screamed, then they were let go. If they weren't screamed, then they were taken. And the girls were as young as four. We provide food and shelter. Carolyn Nguyen Takaro Parker runs the Catalyst Foundation, a nonprofit aid group that brought us here. She told me about the lure of the traffickers, often too strong for these incredibly vulnerable people, the poorest of the poor. How could they not believe that anything would be better than this? And the trafficker looks like your mom. <laughs> doesn't look like a bad guy. The trafficker came to the community, asked the family members, asked my parents, said, if you have a daughter, we have $150, and just show us where your daughter is. And she's been to work for us, and she may be back in a couple of years. Are you interested? And there were parents that said yes. Many of those children will never be seen again. Carolyn believes education is the one thing that can save these kids. That's why she opened Catalyst, the first school for the children of the dump. The main reason that Catalyst exists is to prevent trafficking. And we knew that girls were being taken at, from the garbage dump. And we thought, if you can escape from wherever you're being taken to come home and read the sign, that was one step. 
And Carolyn tells me it's just as important to educate the parents. When we started, it was 99% illiteracy. None of the parents knew how to read and write. The children had never been to school, and we're up to 60% literacy rate. The children were understanding that they could be the generation that doesn't work in the job. I was overwhelmed by these children, by their incredible resilience amid such bleak surroundings. Like 14-year-old Yu. Yeah, she's been here her whole life. Yeah, when she was nine, she started working full-time. 12, she went to school for the first time at our school. Is it hard for her to go to school and work here too? No, it's not hard. We're very realistic about is that we're not going to eliminate trafficking. We're not going to change this whole culture of girls feeling unworthy of themselves. But we're going to change this group of girls. We're going to change 200 girls. Yeah. It's going to happen one girl at a time. Catalyst is one small aid group working to save those children. But this is what it's up against. According to the U.S. State Department 2011 Trafficking in Persons Report, Vietnam is largely a source country, so children are often taken to so-called destination countries. For the most part, they're sent to brothels in Cambodia, Laos, and China. The report says the government of Vietnam does not fully comply with the minimum State Department standards for the elimination of trafficking, but it also notes that Hanoi is making significant efforts to do so. During the year, the government passed new anti-trafficking legislation and a new five-year national action plan on trafficking. Christy. Now, uh, we saw just then desperate scenes that you picked up on your camera there in Vietnam, the poverty, uh, the risk of abduction and abuse, uh, and it's just really good to hear that there are groups out there like Catalyst. And Natalie, you mentioned that your group, you were there in Vietnam originally to build a playground for the children there. So what happened to that project? Yes, yeah, certainly, Christy. Catalyst Foundation knows anything it can do to strengthen the community will help keep the girls safe. So a safe, clean place to play on school grounds was one of their goals. And you'll see that playground in our final report. And the kids helped us build it, too, so you'll see it. But first, I want to share more of the dangers these children face. We'll tell the story of one girl who was taught, always run if bad men chase you. She did, but it did not end well. We'll have her story in our report tomorrow. Christy. All right, Natalie Allen reporting. We'll see you again right here tomorrow on Newstream. Thank you. Uh, the CNN Freedom Project is shining a spotlight on the horrors of modern-day slavery, but it only takes a few people to fight this evil and to force change. On Monday, we introduced you to a community of Cambodian refugees living in a Vietnamese garbage dump, and this is the only home that they have ever known. Uh, they wear and eat what they find in the trash, and the children in particular face a danger worse than extreme poverty human traffickers take advantage of this desperate group. Now, the Catalyst Foundation works in the southern corner of Vietnam to protect these children. Now, the nearest town is called Rakia, and Nali Allen shows us how the war against child traffickers is being fought with books and pencils. This is southern Vietnam, lush countryside in the heart of the Mekong Delta, with rice fields, as far as the eye can see. This is where generations of families earn a modest living. But I've come here on a humanitarian trip to help those who earn far less. Families who work not far from these fields, but worlds away. I was shocked to learn that this garbage dump is the only home for three generations of Cambodians who fled the Khmer Rouge in the 1970s. So the young girl behind us, purple pants, she started at our school two years ago. Carolyn Nguyen Takaro Parker came here from the U.S. a few years ago as a volunteer and stumbled on this place and these people. No one in the larger community was counting them as human beings. They were nobody. They have no access to food or clean water. Home is a shelter made of string and scraps. Caroline was just telling me that this family, which lives here, this right here is their kitchen. 
Uh, a lot of them eat and drink what they find here at the dump. She's encouraging them to at least try and cook some of their food. The poverty is crushing, making these already vulnerable people easy prey for human traffickers. And the children are most at risk. That's why Carolyn opened a school, Catalyst, to educate kids about the dangers of human trafficking, especially girls. Like Ha. School was her favorite place. She's featured in the first brochure. She was asked, what is hope? Her answer, hope is my school. But her hope was dashed on the last day of school in May 2010. As she was walking home with her brother, some men believed to be traffickers started chasing them. As they were being chased, she fell into the river and she drowned. The sad thing is that we taught them to run. So it was, so they did what we told them to do. But we lost her anyway. These children live with the threat of child traffickers every day. They grab them off the streets. They trick parents into selling them offering jobs that don't exist. Carolyn says with an education, they have a chance. When we first met the kids, there was a lot of blank stares. If you ask them what they wanted to be when they grew up, they're like, what does that mean? I mean, they had no concept of anything beyond what they saw today. Family pressure to make money forces many to drop out, like these two girls who spend their nights working at the dump and spend their days alone on the streets selling lottery tickets. How far are they walking into town to do this? Mom, yeah. It takes them two to three hours to get into town from where they live at the dump. And they're headed back now to the dump because they need to work there? Four o'clock, the first garbage truck comes in for the day. They like to come back to the school just to visit, a resting place before heading out on the streets again. In rural Vietnam, I think this is very traditional is that around age 11, 12, the girls have to start thinking about who they're going to marry and be married by 14 or 15. If not, parents often kick them out of home or sell them to traffickers. But the school is helping prevent that from happening. In 2006, before the school opened, Carolyn says more than 37 girls were sold to traffickers by parents at this dump. In 2011, only four were sold. And Catalyst gets help from local officials who at first wouldn't acknowledge a problem with child trafficking, but they want to attract tourists, so they turn to Carolyn for help. They've been actually quite wonderful in a way. They've given us land for free on a 150-year lease <laughs> when there's kidnappers. We can call the provincial government and say, send out your police on our behalf and help us find those girls. One small school raising awareness for an entire community. Over the last year and a half, the boys and girls have been happy. They've, they want to be singers and teachers and doctors and architects. And suddenly, they have a career in mind. Suddenly, they have hope for a future that will take them far away from here. Well, Natalie Allen filed that report and she joins us now live from CNN Center. And Natalie, the Catalyst Foundation is inspiring children and keeping them safe with that one school. Uh, can you tell us more about this group? That's right, Christy. Catalyst is quite small, but it's committed to ending trafficking in this small community in the Mekong Delta. The foundation has a staff of one in the United States. You met Carolyn, the founder in our story, and a very small team in Vietnam. Uh, they have a social worker, three teachers, and three assistants. Those are the teachers there who help out in the community. The school has two classrooms. It's built to hold 87 students, but today they have 212 students and almost 100 from the larger community on the waiting list. In addition to teaching the children how to read, was, we've mentioned the school gives its students, Christy, cell phones. And here's why. In 2008, four girls were kidnapped, but they had a cell phone, and they were able to make a call without the traffickers knowing. And because they could read, they told the school where they were. They could read mm -hmm. the signs, and local authorities were able to rescue them. Good ending. Mm.
That's right. That's how they arm these children so they can protect themselves. Mm -hmm. Natalie, you went there to Vietnam with volunteers from around the world to help those children. That's right. The Catalyst Foundation wanted a safe, clean place for the children to play. If you're a child who lives on a dump, this is your playground. Despite filthy conditions, the ground covered with garbage, the children, being children, just want to play. The kids would all come here and climb up this little pole and bounce on the bags and call it a playground. I've come to Vietnam with an adventure philanthropy group called Road Monkey. We've already biked for a week in the country. That's the adventure part. Now we're in the Mekong Delta to build support, the philanthropy part. In just a few days, we'll transform this empty plot of sand next to the school into the first real playground the children of the dump have ever seen. So we'll show you the playground tomorrow. Children came from all over town when it was finished, and we'll show you the smiles on their faces right here on Newsstream tomorrow. I have to tell you, Christy, if you get a chance to build a playground for some very poor children in a developing country, you should do it. It's very good for the soul. And I can't wait to see what you build. Of course, we'll be airing that tomorrow right here on Newsstream. Natalie, thank you. Now this week, the CNN Freedom Project is showing you how a dedicated group of volunteers is making a difference in Vietnam. The Catalyst Foundation works in the country's southern corner. The town of Rakia is just 22 kilometers away from Cambodia. A community of Cambodian refugees has made a home there in two rubbish dumps. Now everything they have comes from the trash. And three generations have lived in this extreme poverty and the children can become easy prey for human traffickers. But education is helping to protect them from this threat. And as Natalie Allen shows us, that is not the only way the school is improving their lives. If you're a child who lives on a dump, this is your playground. Despite filthy conditions, the ground covered with garbage, the children, being children, just want to play. The kids would all come here and climb up this little pole and bounce on the bags and call it a playground. What she started at our school. Carolyn Nguyen Takaro Parker came to Vietnam as a volunteer from the U.S. and discovered this community of Cambodian refugees. She noticed whatever the kids played with, ate, or wore often came from the trash. We came with matching flip-flops, and they were like, oh, really? They had never had a matching pair of flip-flops before. Today, they have matching shoes, clean uniforms, and a school. Carolyn raised enough money from her volunteer work to create Catalyst School. So these children are the first in generations of families from the dump to get an education. The fight is not only against illiteracy and poverty. These children face constant danger of being sold or kidnapped into the slave trade. Trafficking of young children for the sex industry is rampant in Vietnam and just across the border in Cambodia. So Catalyst goes beyond teaching in a classroom by holding community meetings to teach parents, too. They give them basic parenting skills and the cold, hard truth about what will happen to their children if they sell them. And it's not just their daughters who are at risk. Their sons are vulnerable, too. I've come to Vietnam with an adventure philanthropy group called Road Monkey. We've already biked for a week in the country. That's the adventure part. Now we're in the Mekong Delta to build support, the philanthropy part. In just a few days, we'll transform this empty plot of sand next to the school into the first real playground the children of the dump have ever seen. I'm a little more in my element here. Biking is tough for me. Give me power tools, I'm good to go. Uh, okay. Architects Marty and John designed the playground. The rest of our group built it with help from the local community. Like this Vietnamese mother, 
She has her own story to tell. She fell prey to traffickers who made big promises and the school wound up paying to get her daughter back. Now she's volunteering her time, her way of paying back the school. We walk through the Delta downpours, frequent power outages, and a language barrier. So there's no word for teeter-totter in Vietnam? No. <laughs> the adventure group's founder, Paul von Zielbauer, speaks the language, so that helps. He's traveled in Vietnam for years. Seeing my group engage with the local people and culture is, is one of my favorite parts of doing it. It's why I do this. It's rewarding for the local community, too. One little boy showed his appreciation in a note. And I'm very happy that you're here and that we'll all work hard together. And after four days and nights, the playground was ready. From all over town, all of the children, Cambodians and Vietnamese, come together to play. To see their smiles and joy, you might not know they live here. Winning hearts, one girl and boy at a time. Even after dark, the children stay to play on their playground. Some very happy scenes there. Let's bring in Natalie now from CNN Center. And Natalie, how did you feel watching the children on a playground that you helped to build? <laughs> you know, Christy, I don't think I've ever heard screams of joy like I did the moment they took over the playground. Emphasis on takeover. It was a wonderful feeling. You saw them on the teeter-totter. They didn't realize you're supposed to face each other, but I guess that doesn't matter. They also didn't know how to make a swing go. We had to teach them, but it didn't take long uh, for them to figure out. Yeah, but they had a lot of fun nonetheless. Now, yeah. you also showed us this woman in green, and she was working to pay off debt after selling her daughter not just once but twice. And earlier this week, you told us about a father who offered you his baby. So, Natalie, i got to ask, is the Catalyst Foundation's program for parents really working? Yes, well, they are. But these are the cold realities of that desperation. And that mom, she actually sold her daughter twice. And I want to be clear that the school doesn't pay the brothels. They get the brothels to relieve the debt. They help the parents with money to travel to go get the girls. Uh, so they did that twice for this woman's daughter. But you know what, Christy? She left again. And she told the school that she was sorry, but she got caught up in the sex trade at that point, and that's where she stayed. But the successes do outweigh the losses. The Catalyst Foundation says that in 2006, before the school opened, more than 37 girls from the dumps were sold to traffickers by their parents. In 2011, only four were sold. So, Christy, it's definitely making a difference. That's right, one girl at a time. And, Natalie, I'd like to bring up uh, this woman who you wrote about in your blog. And uh, here she is, mm -hmm. uh, pictured here with most of her family. And they all live at the dump. Uh, can you tell us more? about them. I will. That is you. And you saw her on the teeter-totter, by the way. She was the one of ones screaming with joy. She's still in school. She even takes vocational training uh, with her brother at the school. And all of the school-aged children, she has nine siblings. They all live in one shack on a dump. They all are at Catalyst School now, so that is a success. And education has made the difference, according to Catalyst. When they started, there was 99% illiteracy from the people in those dumps. None of the parents knew how to read and write. The children had never been to school. They are now down to 40% illiteracy, and the kids are teaching their parents uh, how to read. Hmm. Well, Natalie, this is a wonderful story, fantastic reporting. Thank you. Thank Natalie you. Allen joining us live from CNN Center there. And you can see Natalie's blog and more of these pictures online. Just visit CNN.com slash Freedom Project. And you will also find a link to the Catalyst Foundation. We're going to take you now to a small Vietnamese town just miles from the Cambodian border. An impromptu community of refugees scratches out a meager living there, collecting trash from a garbage dump. But the people don't just work there, they actually live there, too. This desperate situation puts them, especially the children, at extreme risk. One organization is working to help protect them and improve their lives. Natalie Allen has their story for CNN's Freedom Project. 
This is southern Vietnam, lush countryside in the heart of the Mekong Delta, with rice fields as far as the eye can see. This is where generations of families earn a modest living. But I've come here on a humanitarian trip to help those who earn far less, families who work not far from these fields, but worlds away. I was shocked to learn that this garbage dump is the only home for three generations of Cambodians who fled the Khmer Rouge in the 1970s. So the young girl behind us, purple pants, she started at our school two years ago. Carolyn Nguyen Takaro Parker came here from the U.S. a few years ago as a volunteer and stumbled on this place and these people. No one in the larger community was counting them as human beings. They were nobody. They have no access to food or clean water. Home is a shelter made of string and scraps. Caroline was just telling me that this family, which lives here, this right here is their kitchen. Uh, a lot of them eat and drink what they find here at the dump. She's encouraging them to at least try and cook some of their food. The poverty is crushing, making these already vulnerable people easy prey for human traffickers. And the children are most at risk. That's why Carolyn opened a school, Catalyst, to educate kids about the dangers of human trafficking, especially girls. Like Ha. School was her favorite place. She's featured in the first brochure. She was asked, what is hope? Her answer, hope is my school. But her hope was dashed on the last day of school in May 2010. As she was walking home with her brother, some men, believed to be traffickers, started chasing them. As they were being chased, she fell into the river and she drowned. The sad thing is that we taught them to run. So it was, so they did what we told them to do. But we lost her anyway. These children live with the threat of child traffickers every day. They grab them off the streets. They trick parents into selling them, offering jobs that don't exist. Carolyn says with an education, they have a chance. When we first met the kids, there was a lot of blank stares. If you ask them what they wanted to be when they grew up, they're like, what does that mean? I mean, they had no concept of anything beyond what they saw today. Family pressure to make money forces many to drop out, like these two girls who spend their nights working at the dump and spend their days alone on the streets selling lottery tickets. How far are they walking into town to do this? Mom, yeah. It takes them two to three hours to get into town from where they live at the dump. And they're headed back now to the dump because they need to work there? Four o'clock, the first garbage truck comes in for the day. They like to come back to the school just to visit a resting place before heading out on the streets again. In rural Vietnam, I think this is very traditional, is that around age 11, 12, the girls have to start thinking about who they're going to marry and be married by 14 or 15. If not, parents often kick them out of home or sell them to traffickers. But the school is helping prevent that from happening. In 2006, before the school opened, Carolyn says more than 37 girls were sold to traffickers by parents at this dump. In 2011, only four were sold. And Catalyst gets help from local officials who at first wouldn't acknowledge a problem with child trafficking, but they want to attract tourists, so they turn to Carolyn for help. They've been actually quite wonderful in a way. They've given us land for free on a 150-year lease <laughs> when there's kidnappers. We can call the provincial government and say, send out your police on our behalf and, and help us find those girls. One small school raising awareness for an entire community. Great faces. We should point out, Natalie didn't go out and cover this story as a correspondent. It was part of a volunteer vacation that she took to help the children of that dump. While she was on her trip, she kept the backstory flip camera rolling to give all of us a look behind the scenes.
I came to Vietnam to tour the country in an unusual way, landing in Ho Chi Minh City and quickly setting off for the coast and the resort town of Nha Trang. That's where the adventure would begin. Unusual because I was with an adventure philanthropy group called Road Monkey. Eight of us from around the world, Australia, Canada, Germany, the U.S., pedaled our way up the coast and through the central highlands. After six days on bikes, we packed up the wheels and headed to the Mekong Delta. This is where the real work would begin. We will build a playground for children so poor they only play on a dump because that's where they live. Road Monkey partnered with the small aid group, Catalyst, which runs a school for the children. They have two classrooms, books, and three teachers, but what they don't have is a playground. So on this empty plot of sand next to the school, this will emerge. Architects Marty and John designed the structure back in the U.S. and gave us all our assignments. And this is a climbing, this is a rope element here. It's a rope, but these are all pieces of wood. So we're going to assign someone to start knotting the rope. Next, we checked to see the tools arrived from the U.S. and prayed the wood was delivered by the Vietnamese. Most of it was. We were given the essentials for the job ahead. Everyone gets a pair of work gloves, and more important, everyone gets a hat. This is actually a non la, which means hat of leaves, and it's also wonderful for keeping out the torturing sun we'll be working in. Hats, gloves, tools, we got to work. But we didn't get very far. A major obstacle, the Vietnamese used different measurements to cut the wood. That was different than ours. It is what it is, became the team mantra, and we got to work with the wrong kind of nails and just a knife to sharpen our marking pencils. Drawing in the sand where things go because of the language barrier. And that was made even more difficult because there's no word in Vietnamese for teeter-totter. So there's no word for teeter-totter in Vietnam? No. <laughs> I've been doing this. Seesaw. 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 Do they know seesaw? seesaw. It's too close to seesaw. But which what's means that mean? Diva. Diva. Oh. <laughs> Undaunted, the road monkeys power up. The playground was underway, and up it went, very slowly over four days and nights. The playground started to emerge with unskilled labor, to say the least. I'm about to go and use some power tools, which I have never in my life used before. Constantly adjusting the fuzzy math and boards that didn't fit. Fabulous. The sun hats were needed to keep out the constant rain. But rain or shine, the work powered on. Until the power went out, which it did a lot. It is what it is, and we pushed on. With the help of the adorable children always at our side, and with the help of the children's mothers who fed us every day. Some moms in the community make our lunch every day. They're moms of the students who come here. So looks like today we're having a nice soup with some spinach and we have beef and pepper and always lots of rice and it is delicious. Well fed, we became bona fide construction workers. We started to succeed. Victory at long last, and these ecstatic children will certainly make up a word for teeter totter in Vietnamese. Now, that's what success looks like. You can learn a lot more about Natalie's trip to Vietnam and the group's work to try to help the children of the dump. Log on to our website, cnn.comslash backstory. You go there and you will find a blog that Natalie wrote, as well as a slideshow of some photographs that she has posted there of her trip.